Hey all, in this video I'm going to show you how I made a quirky PC case that's both functional and fun. I'll admit, when I came up with the idea of this case last year, I thought it would be straightforward and could be designed in one weekend, but boy was I wrong. It became a complex monster and this revision is so far from being optimized, but I'm still happy it works. Stay tuned for my next video where I might have a solution to my printing woes. This is the first pass for this case, and there are obvious ways to improve it, but I would love to hear what you all would do to make it better. I'm honestly still surprised I was able to print this thing at all. I'm not going to bore you with the post-processing, but if you decide to print this out, I will be leaving a link to the files in the description. Just make sure to take your time and be gentle, especially with the thin parts. I was wondering, do you prefer using normal supports or tree supports? Let me know in the comments. Some of the parts in this build use magnets, and I wanted to show you how I make sure the orientation is correct. I do this by marking one side with a marker to act as a visual indicator of orientation. To keep the magnets in place, I slide the magnets in the right hole and then melt the edges over the magnet. How do you capture magnets? Using a soldering iron with controllable temperatures is helpful when doing this, or else you might burn the plastic. Make sure you're not dumping too much heat into the magnet itself. High temperatures can weaken the magnet. Playing with magnets is always fun. Let me know in the comments if you agree. There are tabs in the model that help you align the cheeks and ears when you're melting them together. Make sure not to stab your hand with a soldering iron. It's kinda sorta not fun. You just need to blend the two parts together at the tabs. Make quick, deliberate passes. As usual, I'm using heat inserts to attach the motherboard and other parts of the PC. The 60mm fans will be using metric 2.5 heat inserts. The other inserts are 6x32 size. The Noctua NH-L9A comes with longer fan screws, and these are the screws we're going to be using for this build. Remove the stock screws and make sure you don't forget where you stored them. Line up the motherboard. Place the inner shell over the fan screw holes. Then do the same with the intake duct. Only after you have consent, you can then carefully insert the longer screws through the intake duct, inner shell, and fan. Proceed to do the same with the motherboard holes too. Remember, ease it in slowly. Cross-threading the inserts is no joke. Use your hands to finish the job with the Wi-Fi antennas. My wife says she married me because I'm really good at finger tightening the base of Wi-Fi antennas. The actual Wi-Fi antennas just screw in as normal. Next, just screw in both the intake front fan and the rear exhaust fan. If you have money to spare, offer PWM 60mm fans for less cluttered wiring and better acoustic control. Using just the bit, you can hand tighten the screw that attaches to the power switch and PC LEDs. I'm going to take this moment to explain the airflow achieved with the duct system. Air is forced to enter from the bottom front. That cool air is then fed into the heatsink. The warmed air is contained in the middle shell, but it's immediately sucked into the exhaust duct near the top, and then it's finally drawn out by the exhaust fan at the bottom. Suck cool air in, pump hot air out. Cool air in and up, then hot air down and out, with the main goal of not letting hot air stagnate at the skull of the PC. Don't forget to plug in the power switch and LEDs. When PC parts don't go in smoothly during a build, 
What words or noises do you say aloud to help motivate and encourage you to finish? Let me know down below. I had to go to confession after this, and the priest still hasn't forgiven me for the things I said. Once everything is in and aligned, calmly drive in these last two screws. The mouthpiece snaps on, and so does the top portion of the skull. And with that, we can move to thermal testing. The thermal imaging camera shows that the hot air really is being pushed out the back, and that the skull portion is kept cool. You'll see later on why it was important to have the exhaust fan extend beyond the rear of the skull. It's no surprise that the duct system performed better than the stock system, and that's mainly due to the addition of the two extra fans and active airflow. The stock X300W did not have any case fans. But bear in mind this improvement was also achieved by keeping the top portion of the PC cool, where it usually is the hottest due to natural air convection. Fan ducts have been deployed on OEM PC systems for a very long time, and it was really fun utilizing them for this quirky case. But you might be asking, what's so fun about this case anyway? Well, it not only looks like a head, it can be used like one too. The overall shape of the PC case mimics the skull of a 50th percentile male, so you can place things on top of it just like you would on a human head. And because of the airflow pattern, there is less worry about blocking natural convection and overheating the PC. The air should theoretically shoot out the back and away from whatever it is atop. You can bet that headphones came to mind immediately. Thanks for watching my project. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, check out my channel and consider subscribing. Got questions, thoughts, or ideas? Post them in the comments and I try my best to answer everyone that I can. Our days are always short, so I want to thank you again for watching this far into the video. If someone has found this video helpful, inspiring, or entertaining, then I think I've done a good job. And you can bet there's more to come, y'all. Now I'll let y'all enjoy the rest of the quirky footage. One last thing, my next video might have a solution to some of my subpar prints, so stay tuned y'all.